So I've been a developer for a really long time, probably around 15 years now, but who's counting? God, I'm getting so old. And throughout my whole career, I've been using Vim. I love Vim. And I feel like I'm actually learning something new almost every single day that I use it. It's such a deep piece of technology. You can learn something new pretty much constantly. It's easy to learn, but hard to master. And I just found something in Vim that I didn't realize was going on. It actually kind of blew my mind, but I want to make a video about it because I think it could really help someone who's just learning Vim for the first time. You see, this is an interesting thing that Vim does with text and well, let's just get into it. So let's say I have a file. And in this file, I have a list of things. Let's say it's a shopping list. This is my shopping list that I'm going to go to Whole Foods and I'm going to purchase all of these things. But let's say I want to change this file a little bit. I want everything to be on the same line and not on multiple lines. And I want everything to be separated by commas. Well, what's the easiest way to change this text in Vim? Well, the easiest way would be to create a macro, right? A macro is a list of key presses that you can apply to your file over and over again. Now, the easiest way to create a macro is to type the letter Q. The letter Q denotes that you are going to create a macro now. And then after that, you type the letter of the corresponding register you want to store the macro into. That letter is going to be A for me. So you can see at the bottom of the screen here, I am now recording key presses into the A register. So now if I want to put everything on the same line here, I can type capital A to go to the end of the line and then comma, and then I can hit escape and type Q again. Now the typing Q again will actually end my macro. It will be recorded into the A register and that will be the macro. So now if I want to replay my macro, I hit the at symbol and the register that the macro was recorded into. So I can hit at A. And oops, it turns out I made a mistake with my macro. The macro isn't correct. I want everything to be on the same line. And it looks like all I did was just append a comma to the end of the line. And that's all it'll do. Well, this is where the thing that actually blows my mind comes into play. You see, macros aren't some special thing in Vim. It's really just a list of keys. That's all a macro is. And a macro gets stored into a register. And then you type one special character, which is the at symbol. And that will replay that register in a special way, which is really just a list of keys that will then reenact something on your file. Here, let me show you a little bit more about how this works. I learned this fact by figuring out you can actually edit your macros after you've created them. Speaking of learning new things, you should check out learn.typecraft.dev. It's amazing. We have tutorials and courses and so many more things. In fact, this video is based on an exclusive tutorial in learn.typecraft.dev that was written a week ago. You get access to amazing tutorials, courses, community members, our Discord channel, Channel, all kinds of stuff. It's only $9.99 a month or $60 for the year. There's also a free tier where you get access to our newsletter and our Discord server. But if you like Typecraft, if you want to support this channel and you want exclusive content only available to certain people, join learn.typecraft.dev. All right, now let's get back to learning more about Vim. Let me show you how this works. Let me create a new buffer and then I want to put the contents of my A register into this buffer. You can do that by typing put A. Now you can see the contents of the A buffer is really just a list of key presses. You see, I push capital A to get to the end of the line and I type comma. And then this for, you know, long story short, this is a special character that means escape. So if I want to edit this macro and say, I want to bring the next line below up above, I want to hit capital J. So let me just add capital J to this macro. I accidentally tried to write this buffer to a file, but don't worry about that. Either way, now what I have here is an updated macro. This macro should now go to the end of the line using capital A, add a comma to it, hit escape to go back into normal mode and then type capital J, which will then bring the line below to the current line that the cursor is on. Okay, so this is good. It looks like a good macro. How do I update my macro to then include this new set of keys? Well, I can yank this line into the A register. You see, this is the thing that blew my mind. If you type reg, you can see all of the contents of all of your registers. And I didn't realize this, but right here, you can see that my A register currently has my macro. Your macro is just a string of of text that gets stored in your registers the way everything else gets stored in registers. Your zero register is typically the thing that you've yanked most recently. And then after that, you have other registers that store things that were yanked basically in ascending order. Like I yanked uh, this font family thing before I've yanked this a comma after that I've yanked this ghosty thing before I'm yanking all over the place. And these registers really show the history of the things that I've yanked. If I then go back to my file, if I want to now save my updated macro to the a register, what I do is I want 
want to yank this line to the A register. And you can do that by typing double quote A for the A register, YY. YY will yank the whole line. So now I have yanked this line into the A register. Now, if I want, I can check that by typing reg. And I can see in the A register, my updated macro is now here. Okay, great. So now I can go down to my file and replay the macro from the A register. And you can do that by typing at symbol and then A. A is the register and at symbol denotes that I want to replay a macro from this register that precedes the at symbol. So if I just type at A, at A, at A, that is the correct macro and that is how I wanted this to work. And what really surprised me is that you can replay anything that you have stored in any one of your registers. Like if I want to just replay for some reason, whatever's stored in my zero register, I can type at symbol zero. Now this works because the last thing I happened to yank just happened to be the macro that I yanked into the A register. But if I want to replay something random, like, I don't know, at symbol three, I don't even know what that is. And it doesn't even do anything. At symbol two, yeah, that goes to the end of the line. At symbol five, that highlighted something, I guess. These are just random things that are in my register directory. You can see that at symbol five did star ghosty. So that macro won't do anything because it's just text that I've yanked into the five register. And so I just thought this was a really interesting piece of technology within Vim. I didn't know that this is how Vim actually handled registers. And it was something new that I learned. But I thought that if you were learning Vim, this would be really helpful for you out there to learn. So subscribe for more Vim tips and tricks. And hey, thanks, nerds.